Hello everyone. In the previous video, we covered pointers and how they can indirectly affect the variables that they are pointing to. We also discussed some arithmetic using pointers. And while that wasn't exactly applicable, <clears throat> we learned that typically when you use pointers, you use them as a way of con controlling and modifying indirect variables. So here, I'm going to talk about the special relationship between pointers and characters. So for the most part, the way that you use uh, pointers with integers and floats and doubles, aka the numerical data types, they're pretty much the same. And when you use it with a singular character, the behavior is actually the same. But things get a little bit different when you want to use pointers with strings, meaning character arrays. And that's really their strong suit. That's really the utility of character pointers, is that you use them with strings often. So why don't we make a file and say vim character pointers.c. So here we have character pointers and here I can say char g equals very cleverly g and I can say char h and this can be a string and this will say hi. So if I were to create a pointer to a character I would do it this way and you know what we can give it a value of g right away so we can have it point to g and then now I can print it so if I wanted to print just a singular character as a reminder I just need percent %c and I'll need to dereference our pointer s so why don't we see how this works Well, it behaves exactly as it would with numerical values. So why don't we have our character pointer point to our string hi. And the way I can do that is I can say s is equal to h. And I can do printf percent s, give it a new line. And I can actually just type s here. Uh, because if you didn't know, the percent s actually takes a pointer as an input which has some extraordinary implications because if you didn't notice, if I wanted to print S without using pointers, I would just have to type H by itself with no other modifiers. So we'll get into the guts of why that's exactly true right after we see this example. So let's see what happens when we print our string. Pretty normal. <clears throat> it's pretty nice. So it seems that our pointers can not only point to individual numbers or one letter, they can also point to arrays. But the two examples here that I put are not really the typical use of strings with character pointers. Typically the most useful example or really the most seen examples or something like this. You typically have something like on line 13. That's usually how they're declared. So we can run this without any problems and we can actually uh, read strings. Uh, you know, you can count their length and you can get stuff like that. We can do various string manipulation techniques just by using pointers to strings, to characters, I mean. But what are the implications of line 11? And what are the implications of line 14? What does these mean? What is the difference between something on line 5 versus something on line 13? Well, for starters, I can modify h if I go to its beginning and I say and I change that to a k for example if I try to do that with the same thing with string well 
first let's actually see what happens with H. Nothing. Our program runs totally well without any problems. So now let's try that with string. Uh oh. It turns out when we declare our strings like we do on line 13, they're actually read only. They are read only strings. So why don't we kind of take a look at the addresses of strings? So first I'll start with H. So I will print the address of H and the address of H zero. And then I will print H itself as well. So I'll actually start with H, the address of H, and then the address of H of zero. And actually, now that I have that, let's appropriately label. So now we have that. So why don't we run it and find out what's going on. And I'm still trying to change uh, the read-only string on line 17 when I shouldn't. So we see there that H itself holds the address of the array. And it's the same as the address itself when I use the address operator. So the value of H is an address. The address of H is, is, is the address. And the address of H of 0, meaning the first element, all have the same value. So it's pretty crazy because H is kind of like a pointer to itself and it really points to the first element of our string which is capital H in this case. Why don't we take a look at how it is done for string. So I'll copy this with YY. I'll get string, the address of string, and then the address of the first element of string. So why don't we run this and see what's good. So it turns out string acts like a pointer to a numerical data type. So the address of string is a unique value, but the value of string is different. And the address of the first element of string is the same as the variable value itself. So under the hood, this data is actually this data here this is written in read-only memory. So because it's written in read-only memory, well, we can't write to it. We can't change the values there because we can only read there. This makes things a little bit interesting. So using character pointers in terms of strings is pretty neat because we're able to create static, constant strings that cannot be modified because they are read-only and we're able to do that with having something pointing to them. But they also have a pretty nice property of pointing to arrays and letting us use them the same way as well. We can use them as strings, which is pretty neat. And this is it for how character pointers are related with strings. In the next video, we will talk about how structures are related with pointers and how you can create a link list and use it. Thank you.